program. Now that we can use this by stimulating over the prefrontal cortex to influence mood both in pathologic states like depression or um, even in healthy controls, we can subtly cause people to be happier or sadder. The technology was first used to explore how the brain controlled movement. But more and more, doctors are using magnetic brain stimulation to help lift the spirits of depressive patients. But could it be used to plant specific ideas into a person's head? What we're doing is we are uh, either heightening or diminishing regional activity in our, in our brains, and our brains obviously have mechanisms to regulate moods, just as we regulate our heart rate or other things. And uh, what we're beginning to do is to be able to use this to understand those regulatory systems and kind of push them one way or another. But what about the possibility of reading people's thoughts? Using brain imaging tools, doctors can observe the brain activity associated with specific thoughts or behaviors. It would be possible to not only read the emotional states, but perhaps to induce the emotional states by turning on or off certain regions and then also taking a picture. So uh, although we don't have the ability right now to take a map of the brain and say what, whether someone's happy or sad or angry, um, that's not far away, I don't think. At the height of the Cold War, both sides sought to perfect mind control or brainwashing techniques. Could magnetic brain therapies and brain mapping be used to control people by tampering with their emotions or memory? Well, it's a powerful new tool that, just like uh, nuclear uh, reactions, can be either used to harness energy um, or misused uh, for atomic bombs. Uh, and with the ability to go in and push and pull brain regions, you can use that in therapy, which is what we're doing here, or potentially use it for uh, mis-encoding of information or other things like that. Um, so just like any tool that our society has, it's really up to us as a society to make sure that it's used properly. The ultimate spy, however, is unlikely to be bound by the same code of ethics as scientists. They'll use whatever tools they can. In San Francisco, California, those tools might already be in development. Cheryl Welsh maintains that the U.S. government is testing mind control on unknowing victims. Well, basically, um, this is an, I've, I'm networking on the Internet, and this is a worldwide international problem. Uh, the International Red Cross has a 1990 article which discusses the uh, fact that many major superpowers many industrialized countries are researching electromagnetic technology for anti-personnel um, uses and um, the technology is highly classified. Cheryl believes that she and others are the victims of this mind control research. Many of the victims that I network with describe hearing voices and um, microwave illness where, where they have uh, headaches, uh, just generally sleep disturbances, uh, sunburns even though it's at night, just microwave effects. Microwaves and other radio frequencies are known to affect the human body. But could they be responsible for voices in people's heads? In Chicago, Illinois, a world authority on microwave hearing shows how it could work. I'm hearing a microwave pulse like a click. Now it sounds like a, a chirp with a tone of quality to it. Professor James Lin is hearing sounds that aren't there, but he's not crazy. Pulses of microwave energy are being generated and fired at him from behind. Microwaves can be heard depending on the individual, uh, depending on the hearing acu acuity of the individual. Individuals with a fairly normal hearing can hear microwaves at a, quite a low level. The energy of the absorbed microwaves causes brain tissue to very slightly heat up and expand causing a pressure wave to be picked up by the hearing mechanism in the inner ear. Professor Lin is far from hearing voices, but it could be possible to send coded signals to an agent this way. Brain is an electrical organ. Uh, it is uh, susceptible to electrical signals. Since microwave 
is electrical. Therefore, in principle, one could uh, embed or encode information in the microwave signal such that it could be perceived by the brain. It may be some time before we can control someone's thoughts, but we could influence them, perhaps even send secret instructions at a distance. Instead of breaking into a secure installation, the ultimate spy could control someone on the inside and have their dirty work done for them. But why stop with individuals? If the ultimate goal of the ultimate spy is ultimate power, could whole populations be controlled? The answer is frightening. Before and during World War II, leaders manipulated the public opinion with a potent new info weapon. Propaganda. By controlling what people believed, ministries of which the government controls the minds of everyone around her. Wherever I go about in my day, people will spit, swear, blow smoke in my face, basically a hundred insults a day. You know, and the purpose, it's, Cheryl it's says, is to observe how she reacts so the government can study her mind and eventually use the same technology to control the minds of America's enemies. If that sounds crazy to you, Cheryl says the government is succeeding. You know, you discredit the, the enemy. You make them look like a coup. And if you can imagine the government's motive, I mean, if you can read a person's mind, you're not going to reveal that for anything. She's not the only one. Cheryl has organized a group called Citizens Against Human Rights Abuse that has attracted hundreds of self-proclaimed victims from California and all over the world. I I'm just... Uh, Try to organize, I guess, and gather the information and get the information out, because I don't think the public has it. She's gathered documents like this from the United Nations that suggest banning electromagnetic weapons because of their biological effects on people. She's also collected papers that she says shows long-term American goals. I've got the documents from NASA from uh, Federal Times, from back in the 70s, the DIA, talking about how they were going to use this microwave hearing to, make, to drive political targets crazy. Welsh says more and more people are stepping forward to say now it's coming true. On special assignment. Some of the experiences are voice to skull, where voices are transmitted to a person from a distance, remote viewing where a person can be watched in their homes or picked out of a crowd shocks given to the body paralyzation of the body levitation of body parts gang stalking where people are followed around career careers and jobs ruined with false allegations mobbing in stores where people crowd or surround a target and some of the other symptoms could be a combination of all these types of torture a lot of these symptoms are mischaracterized as being mental illness a lot of these symptoms could cause a person to become ill physically ill Assassinations are carried out by persons being controlled and directed in these ways. The mind can become confused, a person is overwhelmed, and there's no way... ...the presidential mandate, the presidential inquiry, behind Trump's reform speech, the presidential inquiry, the I've spoken to probably 3,000 people. Um, he's on probably 1,500. He's on 5,000. There's a lot of us across the U.S. And there's certain statistics, I think, that if you find that there is something going on wrong, that, that you're going on wrong, that, you got, that somewhere along the line somebody has to do an investigation. There's a certain percentage of illness. Um, you do a, an investigation. If there's a certain amount of cancers in the area, same as uh, Brockovich went and did the investigation. She found a certain amount. Well, we're presenting our case right now 
you said you guys wanted to be in the know. We're giving you the information now so that you are in the know. There is something going on. It's electromagnetically um, um, issue, and it has to do with from cell phones all the way to directed energy. And I think yesterday some of the colleagues went ahead and said that we didn't really talk about whether um, there's energy weapons or not, but I mean, I, we have thousands and thousands of documentations about energy weapons themselves. And all we're asking for is an investigation on this. People are being harmed.